Hello, I'm Chris from the FPL Dude and welcome back to another fantasy Premier League video for the 2021-2022 season. In today's video we'll be predicting that best predicted team now for game week 6. I believe that this team is going to be the team that is going to earn the highest amount of points for this next particular game week. If you are new around here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't be afraid to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And without further ado, let's start building that team. So first of all guys, I am going to take a look at those upcoming fixtures. We are going to analyze them one by one and then I'm just going to pick a team that I believe will do best now. Chelsea plays against Manchester City in the first one. I believe that this might just be a bit too tricky fixture to target. I believe there are not many goals going to get involved in this game. So this game might end up 1-0-1-1-0-0-0-1. So I don't think that we should target any players from these two teams, at least not right now. The next one is Manchester United against Aston Villa. I do believe that Manchester United has more than... Uh, firepower enough to actually beat Aston Villa. I think that they are going to be able to score even a couple of goals against them. The first player that I'm going to bring into this team it is going to be Ronaldo. Um, the second that I wanted to bring into this team was Greenwood, but I'm not sure if Greenwood is going to get those 90 minutes, if Greenwood is going to be able to do good now when Ronaldo is actually playing as a striker. Uh, Greenwood might push out to the right and Greenwood does not play that good as a right winger. He did score around 7 um, goals altogether with FPL assists last season out of 30 games when he was playing as a right winger. So Greenwood does not seem to be the best possible option to go for, at least not right now. Let's just take a look at how that Greenwood situation develops at that team. The next one is Everton against Norwich. I pretty much expect Everton to keep it clean in this one and score perhaps even a couple of goals. Carwood Lewin is injured right now, but they do have one extremely cheap midfielder that is Gray. He costs 5.7 millions. I believe that this guy is going to be able to do wonders for this particular game week. And then we could potentially even go target one of the defensive players that Everton has and in this case is going to be Dinge as he is the most creative player out of all defenders they have right now. He is a player that is playing as a fullback, he likes to push high almost in every single occasion that he gets. So yes, let's move on to the next one. It's Leeds again, West Ham. Leeds have been in pure form now from the beginning of the season so I don't think that Leeds are capable to actually go and beat West Ham. Even Antonio should be making a return after a red card now so he is fit and ready and pretty much hungry to do good now for this particular game. So I'm going to go and target Antonio. I'm afraid that if you want to go and target more than one player playing against Leeds you might get punished as Leeds are not that bad team so they might even win this game um, but I still do believe that their defense is not good enough so they should potentially allow a goal um, this is the main reason I actually go for Antonio let's move on now Leicester plays against Burnley if we take a look at that Leicester team they have not been that good of a player this season Leicester has not been playing that good as you can see Leicester are on the 12th position they do have only two wins out of four now they're still expected to play today as it's Sunday. Leicester plays against Brighton today. I believe that Leicester should be more than capable enough to win in that one. I'm just not sure if Brighton are good enough to withstand them. But however, game week 6 is where they play against Burnley. I believe that Leicester should potentially win in this game. I will go for Vardy as it does seem to be their best um, striker, the best attacking player. Um, you could potentially even go for Telemus as he is very attacking minded as well. He does seem to be the most attacking minded midfield that they have. They do have Barnes and Madison as well that you could potentially go for but Barnes have just been playing terrible this, terribly this season. Madison is still very creative but I just think that he might have limited time. Well, Tillemans does seem to be a guarantee starter, getting guaranteed minutes, playing almost every single minute of every game. 
So this is the main reason I believe that Tillemans is going to start now in game week 6 and he should potentially do very good. Let's move on to the next fixture. This is where Watford plays against Newcastle. Watford has shown that they are more than capable enough of scoring goals. They do have two players that are very valuable. The first one is Sar, their midfielder. This is the player that we are going to go for. 6.1 millions, he's very cheap guys. I believe that this is the time where cheap midfielders are very good and they're going to prevail. Um, we could potentially have gone for Dennis as well, but I just think that this trio might be able to do a bit better than if I was going to replace Vardy with Dennis or Antonio with Dennis or Ronaldo with Dennis or something similar. So yes, Sar is going to be the only Watford player that we are going to target for this particular game week. Brentford plays against Liverpool up next. I believe that Liverpool should end up victorious in this one. They might even score a couple of goals. And Liverpool might even keep it clean. So I'm going to go for one um, Liverpool defensive player. In this case, it's going to be Van Dijk. Um, both Robertson and um, Alexander-Arnold missed out on game week 5 now. They should make a comeback for game week 6. I'm just unsure which of them is going to come back. Perhaps both of them. But as much as I know, Van Dijk is the player that is a guaranteed starter. He's fit and ready to play at least right now. So I think that we could potentially go for him as he's not just a random center back. He's actually drifting very high up the pitch in many occasions on corners, on free kicks, on um, situations where the whole Liverpool team is pushing high. Virgil van Dijk is always in the opponent's half. So I believe that he might be able to score a goal. He might be able to get an extra assist to that as well. And he does have excellent clean sheet potential, especially in this one. So yes, this is how our team looks like so far. Let's move on to the next fixture. Southampton plays against Wolves. Now, these are not two of the best Premier League teams, guys. But if you take a look at them and how they stand right now, they're 15 and 16 placed on the table. Wolves have scored only two goals, guys, in five occasions. They played against Leicester, that are out of form. They played against Tottenham and lost it. They played against Manchester United and lost it. They played against Watford. This is the only win. And they played against Brentford, now losing 0-2. So I believe that Wolves are not that good. Um, I've noticed that Jimenez and Traore are actually extremely creative. But they are just as wasteful, guys. Uh, up to game week 5 now, I believe that Jimenez had like 13 shots, only one on target and zero goals or something like that. So I don't think that Wolves are capable to actually go and beat Southampton is this one. The Southampton defense have drastically improved this season. Um, so Manchester City could not beat them yesterday. West Ham could not beat them the previous game week. Uh, Newcastle scored two goals against them. Manchester United could not beat them, guys. So I believe that this is a team that might be able to withstand Wolves' attacks in this one. So I am going to go for their goalkeeper, McCarthy, just to balance this team out. Um, we pretty much want the players, if we go for three defenders and a goalkeeper, I pretty much want them all four to be from different teams because I believe that balance is actually the key to success. Let's move on now. Arsenal plays against Tottenham. I believe that Arsenal is showing a terrible form and have been showing that now throughout the whole season. I don't think that much is going to improve now under Arteta. So I'm going to go and target a Tottenham defender. Actually. So let's take a look at those Tottenham defenders. If we take a look at their defenders, we can see that half of their team is injured, but Regulian is fit and ready to do good. This is the most creative defender they have. He costs 5.2 millions. Um, he is a player that likes to push very high up the pitch, so he does like to place in many crosses in the opponent's um, box, and he does like to take shots from time to time. So I believe that this guy is going to get himself involved in a clean sheet now for game week um, 6 and he might even get some attacking returns. So yes, Regulian 
remember this guy for this particular game week so as you can see this is going to be the complete complete team for raid uh, for game week six now we can jump on to the bench replacement players the first one that i'm going to bring in is going to be mccarty um all players the first mccarty i'm sorry mccarty he does cost 4.5 million so i believe that he is a player that has been playing almost every minute um he did missed out on three minutes in game week three and he it was replaced against Liverpool as well but when you play against Liverpool you can expect much of a quality. McCarthy is going to be the first bench replacement that I will bring into this team and the second one is actually going to be Livramento. I do believe that he does have very good potential to do good as you can see he is one of those players that is a guaranteed starter and it does cost only 4.1 million guys. If you remember Southampton plays against Wolves in this one so his clean sheet potential should be very high and he is going to be my second bench replacement and as for the last bench replacement I'm just going to simply go for Duffy as Brighton plays against Crystal Palace in this one Crystal Palace have not been one of those teams that has scored most goals and Duffy does uh, seem to be a guarantee starter he even scored goal now in game week two for that cheap of a player he is just too good to ignore and we got 4.1 millions in the bank right now this is where we could potentially just go for the cheapest possible starting uh, goalkeeper somebody that costs only 4 millions it does not need to be anyone in particular as long as he is extremely cheap guys so yeah Kane could potentially be our guy as I'm not going to triple up on Arsenal and he does not eat up any budget. 0 0.1 remaining. So yes, Dinge, Van Dijk, Regulian are going to be the starting defenders. McCarthy is going to be the starting goalkeeper. Tilleman, Sar, Salah and Gray are going to be the starting midfielders. As you can see, they are very cheap altogether. Tilleman and Sar and Gray these are players that does not cost even 20 millions altogether and then we have a lead player like Salah to actually be our potential captain for this particular game week against Brentford. Then for the strikers we get a super trio of Antonio, Vardy and Ronaldo. This is a super trio because all of them have great fixtures now. Um, West Ham plays against Leeds. Leeds are the one of the teams that have allowed most goals in the Premier League. Third third by allowing most goals. Vardy plays against Bright, uh, Burnley. Burnley have not been that good either. They are a team that I believe should potentially allow even a couple of goals against Leicester now in game week 6. And Ronaldo plays against Aston Villa. Aston Villa are a very good team and strong when it comes to scoring goals. But as you can see, where is Aston Villa? They do allow a lot of goals as well. So they've scored 8, allowed 7. I believe that Manchester United should be more than capable enough to win in this one. So I think that the best possible captaincy option is going to be Salah and Ronaldo to be his replacement. Guys, if you thought this video was of any fun, please do give it thumbs up. If you liked it, give it thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if that is something you have not done already. Thank you for watching and um, see you next time.